All right. Good afternoon. Sorry about the moment there to set up. I have a little bit of a demo later on in my talk, and I so I wanted to be able to do it from my laptop. Um, so I'm going to talk about some modern, what I'm calling modern tools for network, uh, visualizing network traffic. Um, so my day job actually for many years was running networks as, as a network engineer, but about four or five years ago I got into building tools to visualize the network and also some, some, to some degree doing automation work as well. Today I'm going to talk primarily about the visualization tools. Um, so we're going to kind of go through a few things here, looking at architecture, and then I'm going to give you some examples, then we'll get into the demo. All right, I'll talk a little bit about our approach, then we'll get into the demo, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap, wrap it up. Um, so kind of an overall architecture to this, how we approach things, um, is we've got uh, quite a number of different pieces that fit together um, that we use in order to be able to build the systems for visualizing things. So on the left, we have some data collection pieces, so that's things like SNMP and NetFlow. And then below that, we have databases and curated, or I call curated data, or canonical data, which are things like um, uh, lists of customers or things like uh, configuration of circuits um, as they're meant to be built. Um, and then in the middle we have analysis, which sort of takes these two pieces in as data and then produces different sorts of an an analysis of it. So you, for, for example, you could, um, one of the things we do is count up how much traffic we serve towards each of our customers every month. So that would be one of the analysis things we do. And then um, finally you can sort of take these things and produce things like reporting and visualization. So today we're going to talk about visualization. Um, so here's kind of the motivating example. This is the, the thing that I built recently uh, in the last, I guess, five years ago is about when I, we, we launched it. And um, this is the front page of the MyESnet portal, which lets you see what's going on in ESnet. Um, and you can see at the top there's this, this traffic map that sort of shows you what's going on in the network in near real time. It's about three to five minutes delayed, uh, basically just due to our, uh, the delay of getting things through our processing system. Um, and that changes over time. And then underneath you see sort of this total traffic in and out of the network as well. Uh, well, actually, it's, yeah. Um, so this is kind of what's on the front page of this. And for a long time we've had this thing and it was kind of this bespoke piece of software that just worked for us. But um, what we really wanted to do was make it more general and reusable. So um, what I'm going to be talking about today is that we've broken it into a couple of pieces so that other people can do some similar kinds of things and I'm going to show you how that all, how the, all that works. Um, so, Here's the other sort of motivating example. What I'm going to do today is kind of step through quickly how we'd build something I'm calling the mini portal. It's similar. Um, you know, it's a, this is kind of a napkin sketch of the, sort of the thing, but on the, you know, the top left, you've got this map sort of concept. On the bottom, you've got some time series chart. And on the right, maybe you have some controls and a little bit of a summary of the view of the data that you're looking at. So we're going to get there in a minute, but um, I'm going to take a quick detour into our approach here just to talk a little bit about this. Um, actually, I think uh, I have a very similar mindset to. Uh, to Matt, the previous speaker, just in terms of make, doing, uh, trying to build pieces that do one thing well rather than trying to do everything all in one place. So we have an idea of components, and there's kind of three big things that we think about those components when we're building this software. Um, the first one is about reusability, which means that we can do it somewhere else. Composability, which means that the components themselves actually have interfaces between them so that they can actually play together. Um, and then finally, we try to avoid things where you have to where you have to spell out um, how to do things. Instead, we will talk about what you want to do. So we, call, we, we talk about them being declarative. Um, and then you know, we try as much as possible to leverage existing software. We really don't like to rewrite things we don't have to. Um, there's, we, you know, there's lots of really great stuff out there already, and there's not enough time in the day to do all the things I want to do. So um, obviously, trying to leverage existing tools is very important to us. And then finally, one of the things we also find very, very, very helpful is to be iterative in our approach, which is to get something out there, get some feedback from our user community, and then sort of evolve it. Um, pretty typical story in that regard as well. So let me just uh, go a little bit more into the, um, well, actually, I think I already covered all of this, so we can go on to the next slide here. Um, but I do want to kind of just drive home this idea of declarative versus of imperative, right? So if you ask your friend, like, hey, you're going to come over for dinner, how, how do I get there? And he's like, oh, well, you go down Route 3, and then you go to buy the old barn, and then you do this and that. And you're like, no, 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 come on. I, I, that doesn't work. Instead, what you want is, I just want your address. Put this in the GPS, it gets you there, right? You just declare what you want to do, and it helps you get there. Um, and there's the obligatory XKCD. Unfortunately, there's way too much text for that to be read in this period of time, so you can go back and read that later. Um, OK, so now, um, kind of moving right along into uh, the pieces that we have. So, uh, you saw at the bottom of that first slide is some charts here. Um, this is just one another example of that. And um, you know, time is the axis on the bottom, and then traffic in and out, in on the top, out on the bottom. 
is kind of what you're seeing there. So that's one of the kind of widgets we can do. So that's kind of the, the one that we see a lot, but this library actually can support doing a lot more with that. So this is also a fairly simple thing to declare in, in, in what we do. And, but this is three charts that have all kinds of different things, and it includes not only line charts, but scatter charts and uh, area charts. So you can see these three charts are all composed together. They actually all share one time axis. So that you're kind of visualizing data on all these three fronts at once. Um, and the nice thing about not putting them all on the same chart is that you can sort of see them a little bit better. Um, if they're all crowded on one chart, it's a little hard to understand some of the relationships between things. Um, so this, this is actually some weather data from a weather event out in the Bay Area a few months ago. One of my coworkers put it together. Um, OK, uh, and then finally, there's the network diagram sort of drawing maps like this. Um, and this is all data driven. Like this is, not, this is not a Visio diagram. This is all specifying the location of these nodes and, these, and then specifying which edges connect to each other. So it's completely data driven. So you can drive this from your network config, which is in fact what we do. Um, I drive it from the network config. What we don't do is do the automatic placement of the nodes, because it turns out placing nodes and having it come out look, looking geographical, which this is roughly geographical. If you look, squint a little bit, you can see the United States in here. There's a part on the, on the right which goes over to Europe, but there you can kind of see the East Coast going down the diagonal line there, and the West Coast is kind of this vertical line on the left-hand side. Um, so anyway, we laid out the nodes, but then the, the data, it's all data-driven to actually connect them together. We drive that from our network configs. Okay. Um, and then there's actually some other things that we can do in terms of network diagrams. Um, we can kind of develop, and it doesn't show up super well on the screen, but we develop some network, uh, we have a database that tracks our internal circuits. And so these circuit layout records are generated automatically from the data. Um, and that's also in the library that I'm talking about today. But I'm not going to focus on this so much, because uh, I'm going to go into some other examples. But this is also another capability of the sorts of things that we're able to do. Um, and then finally, this one's a little more abstract, but uh, there's, there's, a, there's a third library that, I'm, that kind of undergirds all of this, which is what we call, we call Pond, and it, um, it, it, it's basically an abstraction over time series data. So we found that as we were writing this software, we kept rewriting the same little loop that would sort of like adjust the time series data in some way, maybe multiply octets by eight to get bits per second, so you could have bits per second rather than bytes per second, you know, since we're networking people, and um, so on and so forth. Um, so we found a lot of these things we were doing over and over again, so having a library to sort of express ideas about these time series was helpful. Um, and so there's other things it can do, and the color's a little faint on here, unfortunately, but um, that can, we can actually take the raw data, 30-second samples, bin it into specific time granularities, and then bin it into, say, five-minute bins. So this gives us a little bit of power to sort of manipulate uh, our time series data. And actually, this animation was all generated through uh, driving uh, data, using, data using data through the, net, uh, the time series charting library using Pond. So actually, it's th this is a GIF capture of that, but the, the, this chart was actually generated doing that. Okay, so here we go into the part where it's a little more risky. So I'm going to switch from PowerPoint into Chrome and see if we can. All right, great. So I said earlier. You know, here's kind of a uh, back of a napkin sort of sketch about uh, something you might want to build. Obviously, each of you has an, you know, your own unique kind of things, but um, here's kind of an example of something you could do. So what I'm going to do is walk through this step by step and sort of add one thing at a time. So the first thing we'll add is kind of on this right, this control and summary info, which kind of has to do with also fetching data from our backend server, right? So clicked on there, and now this is actually populated with the real thing. Um, and you can see now we've got this idea of, what the begin date and the end date of the data is. And this is um, the total traffic for both of the, the links we're showing. And we can see the average and the maximum. Uh, and then the bottom is this tracker thing, which we'll, when we'll, a little bit later when the charting works, you'll be able to sort of look at a specific point and get its value. All right, so I just kind of want to show that um, this isn't all that scary. So I'm going to show a little bit of code. I'm not, not, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on this code. Um, and this one, and this stuff in particular, I make, I'll probably will skim over pretty fast. But I want to show you the first thing I want to show you is that it's just JSON data. So if you can produce your data in a JSON format, we can consume it and display it with these tools. Um, so this uses, just uses jQuery in a browser to go off and fetch some data. And then we kind of do just a minimal amount of processing to it here in the second step and turn it into a pond time series so that we can manipulate it inside of our tools. Um, and then so finally here, um, let's see, we'll work if I highlight these sorts of things. So down here you can see that then we're also able to extract the average and the maximum, and that's what actually gets displayed in that little box up on the right. And then um, 
finally, we can do some nice time formatting to get you know, times that are human readable rather than number of seconds since 1970. Um, so that's the first little, little bit that we, that we did. Um, so the next step then is to make the chart at the bottom actually do something. So if we go to the next step here, you can see now we're actually taking that data that we received over the network and we're, we're producing one of the charts like we had before. And now if I take the little tracker over this, I can kind of run over it and get, um, and get all of this. And so this is where kind of where we get to the point of, okay, so great, we've got this, how much code do I have to write to get something like this to work, right? Like I probably have to do all kinds of crazy stuff. And really, this is the whole thing. Um, and a lot of it is just in pretty readable text. It looks a lot like HTML. Um, and basically, what we start out, we say, well, we have a chart container, something that holds these charts. And we talk a little bit about that, the time range that we're speaking of, beginning and end time. And then we pass in a callback function to sort of handle what happens when the tracker moves, because that could be a little, bit, um, a little bit specific to a given application. So that makes it a little more configurable. But it, the function that does that is actually quite simple. Um, and then we put in the max time and the minimum time. Uh, the, uh, minimum time. Um, and then finally, the next section, there's a chart row, which is um, this whole thing here. But in that one where there was three charts, there would have been three chart rows. Um, and in there, we have an, an, an area chart, which is what we call this, this sort of traffic chart that we have here. Um, and then we simply just pa pass in that time series that I got back. And it has an attribute called in and an attribute called out. And you can see here, we just say, oh, well, for the upside, we want to, to use the in column. And for the uh, downside, we want to use the out column. And so that's, that's kind of how we get to having the traffic on this chart. All right, so then um, we kind of worked through that. And again, the point here is that there's not a lot of code involved. So we're, we're really um, focusing on making it. So this is not just an application you can use. It's something that you can put into whatever existing web sort of stuff you have, rather than having to adopt someone else's platform. You can sort of integrate this into your platform. Um, so then finally, you know, we'll add this little map here. Um, so since we work with uh, a lot of uh, uh, big lab, big government labs uh, doing high performance physics stuff, the example here is Fermilab out, out in, uh, in the suburbs here, Brookhaven Lab in New York, and then CERN in Switzerland. Um, and this is just sort of a, a notional diagram of traffic transferred between them. It's not, we don't have circuits that are literally that way, although we do carry traffic across those paths. Um, anyway, so now we're able to draw this map. And um, now if I go down here to the tracker, you also see that the traffic volume, the, the colors change on the edge of the map. Again, basically you can sort of, based on this diagram, you can have this interaction between these two things. And so this is, again, kind of an example of the composability I was talking about earlier. Um, so again, I'll kind of go through just a little, little sample of what this looks like. Um, so to, just to find the dots on there, the nodes on there, again, it's just JSON. You know, basically, you give it a name. You give it an x and y position in the coordinate space. Um, you talk about maybe what its capacity is. In this case, 100 gigabits. Um, and then some you know, formatting stuff like, oh, the label goes to the left. We're kind of working on maybe improving, making, automating some, of the, some parts of this. but. Um, like the label positioning stuff could probably be a little bit more automatic. Um, but so then the next step is to define an edge, which you know is a circuit or, or, or whatever, in this case, just the connection, a logical connection between two entities. And all you do is you say, well, um, uh, and again, the, the capacity is repeated. So in, in, for the, hub, it, the, the other one was saying this, this, this has a 100, gigab 100 gigabit cable or router. And then here we're saying this circuit is actually 100 gigabits. But, um, and then basically you just say, well, this goes from you know, CERN to Fermilab. So that's pretty much all you have to do to declare that. And then finally, we want to get the traffic for each of those so we can uh, highlight what color's in there. Um, so we just say, OK, well, I need, I need to go into the traffic data for Brookhaven. And then at the index, which is what is passed in, is when you move that little pointer thing, give me the in or the out, you know, so on and so forth. So again, pretty straightforward. But the nice thing is we didn't make any decisions here for you. If you have a completely different way that you want to populate the data into this chart, you know, it's up to you. You just have to get the data in there. This is just one example of one way to do it. And then finally, there's another you know, sort of declarative statement here about what the traffic map is. You know, so we pass in the topology, which is the list of nodes and edges, and then a few other miscellaneous things, um, sort of bookkeeping things. And then there's a, this on selection change callback. So it's a, a way to, again, allow you to customize what happens here. Um, so that is the main part of the demo. But I did want to show one last thing. And uh, 
this is the part that may or may not go well since I just got this working like five minutes ago. Um, so the other nice thing, the other thing we've been able to do then is since we have this map thing that is kind of this component that we can manipulate, we can actually turn it into an editor pretty easily. So now say, well, I don't really like the layout of you know, the way these things work, so I'm gonna kind of move these around a little bit. And then, and I could change the properties of the, of the various nodes, whatever, I save it. And with a little bit of luck, yeah, so the map, you know, now is uglier than it was before. Um, so that's kind of all of the pieces put together in a real quick whirlwind tour. Um, so I will now switch back and finish up the presentation part of this, I guess. Um, so, um, I guess the main thing is all this stuff's open source. We've, um, we've made it all available on, on, those links are through ESNet, um, but that's actually all hosted on GitHub and it's the documentation's there and there's links to the repos directly from there and there'll be links to all this at the, on the last slide as well. So, you know, why do we do this? I mean, there, there's some obvious reasons why you open source things, but I think the biggest reason for me, well, aside from giving back to the community, because like, we couldn't have done any of this without all of these amazing pieces of software we built this on top of, um, but, I really hope that we can, this can be part of a conversation about how to build a, uh, you know, a new common set of tools that we use for visualizing network data. Um, RD tool has for a long time been the go-to thing and it has, it has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. Um, and it, it can only visualize certain kinds of things. And so we're looking to visualize more kinds of things. And so we're hoping that by sharing this that we'll also get, you know, sort of incentivize the community to come up with new visualizations and share them as well. So that's. That's kind of the beginning of a conversation about, well, what can we do together to visualize network traffic? So I think this is a lot of potential for new things we could possibly do. Um, and so that's the, um, I think that's my last slide. So that's the end, the end of uh, my talk. Uh, I guess I'd also like to say that I, I really enjoy working with networks and I really like software. So if you're interested in automation or visualization or any of that, I'd love to talk to you about any of those sorts of things. Um, so at, that po at this point, I think I'm done talking. Uh, does anyone have any questions? You let me off easy. All right. Well, if you do have questions and would like to find me later, I'll be around. All right. Thank you very much.